Hello everyone, and welcome to my real ghost encounters. I'm gonna tell you the real stories, the real things that have happened in my life. We're gonna start this off back in 1992, when I was just two years old. I lived on a very, very rough estate called Gascoigne Estate in Barking. I lived with my mum, my dad, and my little brother Craig, who was just one years old. Anyway, we lived there for two years, nothing happened, very peaceful, but I had an uncle who loved to travel and tour the world and explore China, Egypt, Japan, Thailand, you name it, he's been there. Anyway, one day we're sitting there, obviously I can't remember this, this is just going off my mum and dad's story of what happened to me when I was little bang at the door it's me uncle Tony he's back he's back from I think it was Egypt at the time he's coming he's speaking to me mum and dad um, they're asking him how was the country he said yeah it's lovely lovely and hot rah rah he goes I found um, some weird objects though when I went and explored near the tombs uh, uh, in Egypt he ex explored tombs and he goes I found these weird objects he goes do you want one my mum said, oh, okay then. Thought sort of like a souvenir, thinking nothing of it. So anyway, she goes and pits it in her um, bedroom, pits it on the side. Anyway, a few nights later, she started noticing some weird things happening in the house. Like a few weird bangs coming from the bedroom. Um, things darting past her eye, in the corner of her eye, like shadow figures and things like that. But she didn't think much of it. But um, she wanted to move anyway. It's a very rough estate, and she wanted to move. So she said to me, "Dad, I don't feel comfortable here anymore. I've been hearing noises and weird little things. I don't know where it is." My dad, being a skeptic, he said, "Ghosts ain't real. Um, it's just a story to scare people." Let's go uh, get that sensor going again, people over here. That's better. He goes, it's just a story to scare you all. Ghosts ain't real. And my mum goes, oh, okay. So anyway, let's put that back down. So anyway, one night, they're sitting in the front room with me. Craig's asleep in the bedroom. We put him asleep. He's one years old. Bang! Ran to the bedroom, people. Craig sitting in the middle of the floor with the object that my Uncle Tony's give him. Mirrors smashed into a thousand pieces and he's in the middle of the floor with this object in his hand. Not one cut on him. My mum went, right, we're moving. My dad's gone. Um, yeah, that's a bit weird. Still not believing, he's a sceptic, still not believing. That's weird, he's not got a cut on him. He's, he's saying, well, the baby must have got out, he must have smashed it with the object. But he was one years old and he, could walk, he couldn't walk, he could just crawl. Now, even if he did manage to get out of his cot, pick up that weird object and throw it at the mirror at the age of one, how weird is it? How weird is that? Just to think about, when you think about that, how weird is that? Right. So anyway, that's the major thing that happened in that flat in Barking. But mum also said that while... After we got that object, that I used to see things in it, I used to point to the ceiling and I used to be laughing. I used to be laughing at the ceiling, pointing. I'm sorry, but I heard a few noises. As you can see, I'm in a quite a scary location and we're actually going to explore afterwards. But yeah, she said I used to point at the wall and try and talk, obviously I'm two years old, try and talk and, and uh, laugh at things that weren't there. But anyway, eventually they moved out. Um... We're going to fast forward now, eight years later, seven, eight years later, I must have been nine or ten, brother's nine, mum and dad in their early thirties, 
we're now in a house in Dagnum. Still got that object, by the way. They don't get rid of that object. I do not know why they don't get rid of that object. I'm now in a house in Dagnum. We've lived there for quite a few years. My brother Craig would not sleep in the bedroom. He always slept in my mum and dad's bedroom. Now, there's a weird story to this house in Dagnum. Um, first of all, I was never ever scared. I'd sleep in, I'd sleep in my bedroom room. We had bunk, bunk, bunk beds. My brother slept on the bottom, I slept on the top. But like I said, he never used to sleep in the room with me. He used to always sleep in my mum and dad's room. So anyway, one night near winter, near Halloween, this was. I see a shadow, like a shadow figure in the corner, and it was rummaging around my toys, my toy box, and I was terrified. People, anyway, this shadow's turned around. After rummaging around my toys, it looked like it was stealing my toys, putting something in a, a, like a backpack on his back, completely black. Could not see anything, just black, black face, black figure. I, I'll never ever forget what I saw. Just completely black people, like with a black sack on his back. After he's rummaged around my toys, it looks like he's picking up my toys and trying to steal them. He's then turned round and he's walked right up to me. And as he's got to me, he's disappeared in front of my eyes. I've had I had this happen over the years, over and over again in winter, people. And obviously, being nine, ten years old, your mum and dad don't believe you. So obviously, I'm terrified. I'm, I ran out my room, screaming, "Mum, mum, 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 mum! Someone in my room! Someone in my room! Just grabbed my toys! He came up to me and he just disappeared! He just disappeared!" And I've just gone, "Yeah, whatever. Go back to bed." Now this is where it gets weird, people. Um, I had a cousin stay over. She used to babysit us. Her name's Jamie. She's about she, at the time she was 17, 18 years old. She uh, one night, hang on a sec, I just gotta move my arm. One night she came to stay, and as Craig would never sleep in his bed because he was scared, he's in mum and dad's room. She slept on the bottom bunk. So anyway, same sort of thing. Three o'clock in the morning, she's woke up. She's had a noise. She's seen the shadow figure in my in the corner of my room rummaging around the things she never went to sleep she never made a peep she never said anything she didn't want to disturb me i was asleep on the top bunk anyway she's come down in the morning right and she said this to my mum and dad in private she didn't want to say it in front of me or my brother she didn't want to scare craig any more than he was scared she's gone i'm never sleeping in that room again and i've gone why and she's gone, there was something rummaging around in the corner. Something rummaging around in the corner. Going through Daniel's toys. It come up to the bunk beds. And then disappeared. And then my mum and dad's face dropped. Because obviously, over the years, I've been telling them this. Like, I've been telling them, like, there's something in my room running around the toys. Their face have dropped and they've finally sort of twigged on that. It's not a lie. The things that I'm saying are true. And um, there's something going on. Well, anyway, one night, me, uh, my mum's sitting in the front room on her own. Whizz. She's thinking, what, what the, what's that? What's that? She's gone into the kitchen. The washing machine has gone on fast spin. Now, what was weird, people, is the washing machine wasn't on. It was plugged in. She said it was plugged in, but the switch was up. So it wasn't pushed down, it was up. And it come on fast spin. So after she heard the story about the guy, things started happening in the house. It was like it didn't want to show itself to my parents, so it just terrified me. Now, I also had other things happen to me when I was in that house. I had something punch me in the back. I also had a dictaphone, um, which... So my nan bought me and I just left it on the side we came down to Clacton because obviously I used to live in Dagnum and when I come back from Clacton staying in my caravan um, I pushed play on my dictaphone it was um, really really quick noise I couldn't understand it I slowed it right down and it sounded like something demonic saying we're gonna get him we're gonna kill him we're gonna show him darkness and all it was it was just saying random stuff like it was going on about light darkness we're gonna get him we're gonna do it and all this 
and I could not believe it. I, I, I smashed that dictaphone up, I threw it away. And that was one of the most scariest houses I've ever lived in. I still have nightmares about that house. I have nightmares about the stairs for some reason. I used to have a door at the bottom of the stairs and I, I keep having this dream where I open the door, I go up the stairs and when I try and come back down, I'm just floating in the air and I can't get back down. And the door at the bottom of the stairs is just slowly shutting. It's, that house is just terrifying. I'll, I'll give you the address of the house. The address of the house is 100 Brumple Road, 4PH in Dagnum. Now, the reason why I'm giving you this address is because a burglar actually died there and fell out the window. So this is what I think the black figure was in my bedroom. Burg someone burgled the house, tried to escape out the window, and fell to their death. Um, my bunk bed was right next to the window where this happened. So I, I just don't know people, I don't know what to say, but yeah, I definitely believe in ghosts. And this is why I do these exploring videos. Right, I'm gonna move on to the final story, probably the most scariest story, probably the most scariest thing I've ever seen. And that is going to be on possession, people. Yes, somebody that I know did actually get possessed. We're going to now fast forward to 2000 and I think it was, was it 14 or 15? 2015, I do believe it was. This was uh, about five, five years ago now. Um, my brother Craig used to live on high fields in a caravan. And he used to have Ouija boards, the Chucky doll. He used to have old objects. Anyway, he had a couple of mates around couple of drinks out of nowhere Craig picks up his Ouija board and he starts playing it he shuts his eyes and he starts spelling out words people are like what are you doing Craig he did not make a noise all of a sudden he throws the board in the playing chip and he starts screaming everyone out everyone out everyone out so everybody says no we're not leaving you like this Anyway, he then goes completely stiff, completely stiff, and I get a phone call. I'm at home with my partner in my first house in Clacton, down Warwick Road. I get a phone call. This is 12, 11, about 11 o'clock at night. This started happening about half nine, ten. But I get a call about 11 o'clock at night. Daniel, you need to come down. This is from my mate Shane, who sadly passed away in a car crash, by the way. Daniel, you need to come down now. Why? What's the matter? Uh, it's Craig. It's Craig. I want, what is he drunk? He was like, no, it's really messed up. You need to come down now. He's not responding. The ambulance has been called. Anyway, he's my brother, so I'm going to rush down there. I've rushed down there, people. And what I see was probably the most frightening thing I've ever seen. My brother Craig leaning up against my brother Jake, completely stiff, with eyes wide open like this, not blinking, just growling, like, rrr, rrr, completely stiff, right? So anyway, the ambulance gets there. It takes four or five of us to get him in this ambulance. Let's go get that sensor going over there again. It takes four or five of us to get him in the ambulance. And meanwhile, he's all growling. He's super strong for some reason. Not talking, not blinking, just growling, super strong, all twisted up. So, anyway, he's in the ambulance, on his way to Colchester Hospital, wakes up at Wheelie. What am I doing? Where am I? Why, why am I here? Jake's like, because Jake was in the ambulance with him, my younger brother. I was on the way with my partner to Colchester Hospital. Where am I? What am I doing? I was in my caravan. It was, Jake's like, Craig, you're on the way to hospital. Something weird's happened to you. You've been messing around with your Ouija board. He's like, I was just in my caravan. And Jake's like, do you know what time it is? And he's like, nine o'clock. It was half past two people, half past two, like that half past two. Anyway, so another weird thing, his eyes were, where he didn't blink, his eyes were completely red when he woke up and he come to, his eyes were completely red. Anyway, so we got to the hospital, the people, the ambulance people are thinking, right, this guy's probably on drugs or drink or something, growling, making weird noises in the ambulance. They've done a test on him. No drugs in his system. Just a slight little bit of alcohol. Obviously, he had a couple of drinks, but not a lot. And they're all sitting there and they're thinking, hang on, this was, this was a bit weird. This was a bit freaky. Now, there was witnesses to this. All the security were on the high fields witnessed this. 
and a lot of people witnessed this and they all say he was possessed so anyway on the way back from the hospital because me and my partner have picked him up and we're going back to Highfields he goes completely silent in the car my partner is extremely scared she goes Craig 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 he goes yeah yeah I'm fine I'm fine so we're saying yeah when you get back Craig we're gonna stay in a caravan with um, Jake you'll stay the night with Jake and then like once mum and dad come back because they're away um, then you can go back to your caravan Anyway, he's agreed with me. He's gone, yeah, yeah, yeah. As soon as we got back to the caravan, it's quarter past three in the morning. He's gone, no, I'm going back to my caravan. We're going, Craig. Craig, you can't go back to your caravan. He's going, no, I'm going back to my caravan. We said, Craig, you can't. He went, I must go back to my caravan. He started shaking. And he's going, I'm going back to my caravan. Going, me, Jake, and my mate Shane, like I said, the one who sadly passed away in a car crash, rest in peace, uh, Shane Scott, um, took him back to my mum and dad's caravan where Jake's staying, and we wouldn't let him leave until the morning anyway we've gone in his caravan and every single door in his caravan was open the cupboard doors the bottom doors all the doors were open Ouija board on the table with a playing chip on the floor playing chip on the floor Ouija board on the table we got that Ouija board we burnt it and we broke it up we took Craig to a priest and he had to get blessed and the priest had to come to his caravan to do a few things, like basically bless the place. Um, nothing else happened in the caravan to Craig, apart from Craig said he had some really, really weird dreams. Uh, one night he woke up screaming, and he was actually cuddling my mum, saying, Mum, 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 Mum. And my mum was going, Wake up, Craig, wake up. He had some really weird dreams, and he said he had, um, every time he went out, it had. Um, black cats following him for some reason and he kept dreaming about going down the tunnel and there was black cats behind him some weird dream but ever since then he's been completely fine but I'm telling you people do not mess around with Ouija boards now anyway I'm going to stop going on about ghost stories as you can see we are in the graveyard I'm going to have a quick explore we have been here before but we're going to quickly explore some of this graveyard um, before we do, I want to shout out to one of my subscribers, Susie, who actually gave me a couple of books over the weekend, last weekend gone. And uh, she gave me a couple of books on haunted Clacton, haunted culture stuff. It's, in it, it's got every paranormal event that's happened in Clacton and Colchester and UFO sightings. So what we're going to do is we're going to read through that book and we're going to go visit some supposedly haunted places number one on that list is the treasure hole so if people do not know about the treasure hole it is an old inn that dates back to like 1300s 1400s is extremely haunted obviously we can't go in there but we can visit the gardens outside so i will visit it and we'll probably video some of the building outside but yeah shout out to susie for giving me those books right let's go check out this graveyard people because this is probably one of the most scariest graveyards I've been to. So let's go explore some of this graveyard, people. I have been here before, but I just mainly wanted to tell my ghost story. But as we're here, we'll have a little look around. We'll read some of these graves. Who knows, we may pick up on something. In love and memory of Henry William Reed, who died 4th of January, 1899, Age 74 years, then let us dry our every year, every tear through here is gone. We love so dear, and may our love in Christ be given that we meet again in heaven. Also, of Mary of Wife of Above, who departed this life 24th of December 1905, aged 72 years. Lovely poem, rest in peace check out some of these tombs creepy with the bars can we read the writing on that extremely old 1865 i don't know if you can see that 1865 that is old people some of it this tomb has some of the bars missing such a scary little graveyard every time I come here I get chills I 
hope that footage weren't too dark for you. It was dark, me telling my story, but obviously I wanted to set the scene for you all. Hope you enjoyed the story. I want to say that was 100% true, everything I said. I have other stories like that, similar to that. But they're the main ones that's happened to me in my life. What is this? That is a bit freaky, isn't it? What's that, a bell? I have heard a story. So, people used to put bells on graves. So, if the person in the ground was alive, they'd ring, they'd pull the string, and the bell would ring to let them know that they're alive. That is a bit freaky seeing that. And I think that is what that is. I've got, there's no other reason what this could be. This must be years and years old. Just take a look at it. Let's see how old this grave, this tomb actually is. Let's see if we can find some uh, writing on it. I can't see no writing on it. Extremely weird. But that's what I think that is. I think that is some sort of bell. These are definitely the most creeping looking graves in this yard. Quick look at the church. I am actually going to come here of a day and we're going to check this church out. We're going to go inside. You can just see how old this church is. It's absolutely ancient. We need to find out when this dates back to. Obviously, it was a building before the church. Some sort of lord or lady would have owned it. I did go and visit St. James's Church in Clacton also. You can check that video out. But not a scary video. And the church is an absolutely beautiful church, but it's not scary like this church. I'm telling you, this is a pretty scary looking church, as you can see. Now, if anybody sees anything in my videos, please comment in the section below. Let me know what time, what you saw or what you heard. Right, I have explored this graveyard before, so if you want to check out the video, go back and check that video out. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. This was a different type of episode, a one-off special telling you basically my life ghost stories, or the short version, because I've had many, many panel um, things happen to me in the past. So uh, if you did enjoy this, please remember to like and subscribe for more content. There will be more panel exploring and exploring videos coming to the channel. So I'll see you next time. Bye.